Alam naming nag-aalala ka. Kaya ginagawa naming lahat ang aming makakaya. Para safe ka dito sa ospital. Ang ospital at medical staff ay nakasuot ng protective equipment. Tuloy-tuloy ang disinfection sa lahat ng areas sa ospital. Ang bawat pumapasok, kinukuha ang temperature at mga detalye para sa contact tracing. Sinisiguro din na may tamang social distancing ang mga pasyente. Hiwalay ang lugar sa mga regular na check-up o procedure. At sinisiguro ang mga equipment at kwarto ay sterilized at malinis. Kaya huwag kang mag-alala, safe at alaga ka dito. Safe at alaga kayo dito. Safe at alaga kayo dito. Dito sa VRP Medical Center, nakahanda kaming magbigay serbisyo sa bagong panahon. Para sa iyo at sa pamilya mo. Ito ang alagang VRP. For women of certain age, the onset of menopause may be met with anxiety and worry. And the fear that life will cease to be as enjoyable and fulfilling as in their younger years. Indeed, discomfort is normally associated with menopause. Today, a change in mindset is in order. With the arrival of the modern woman's newest ally in dealing with menopausal discomforts. Tibolone Amina. Amina is the latest product from BioFab, the women's healthcare division of Unilab. Amina offers comfort from menopausal discomforts. Amina has positive effects on women's health. When my own mom experienced menopause, she would be seized by the dreaded hot flushes and would wake up at night drenched in sweat. Oh, it's just too bad she didn't have Amina. Amina is a proven effective therapy against vasomotor symptoms such as hot flushes and night sweats. I like having fun. I love to laugh. 
and I've always enjoyed an active, fulfilling sex life. Did menopause change all that? Not at all. Amina improves mood and sexual well-being and prevents vaginal dryness. Growing old, having menopause, my biggest fear was having brittle bones, the pain of fractures, maybe having to depend on a cane or being trapped in a wheelchair. Now I worry no more. Amina reduces the risk of vertebral and non-vertebral fractures. I am determined to age well. Cholesterol was not a problem in my younger years, and it will not be a problem now. Amina lowers cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Some people thought that when I reached menopause, my muscles would weaken. Does this look weak to you? Amina minimizes menopause-related decline in muscle strength. To some, reaching the age of menopause would mean an increased risk of heart ailments, not with Amina. Amina protects against coronary artery disease. As a young woman, my biggest fear was having cancer of the breast. But now that I am older, I have learned to relax, especially having Amina on my side. Amina reduces the risk of breast cancer. I have comfort against hot flushes and night sweats. My mood is improved, and so is my sexual being. I am protected by fractures and osteoporosis. My cholesterol levels are normal. My muscles remain strong despite menopause. I am protected against coronary artery disease. I am protected against breast cancer. I have Amina on my side. Tibolone Amina. Comfort from menopausal discomforts. Only from Biofam, the women's healthcare division of Unilab. Amina. You still look young, pero di mo alam, aging ka na pala inside. Kung meron ka ng, uh, at tuwing gagalaw, sign yan na ang flexibility ng bones and joints mo, hindi na tulad ng dati. Invest in your flexi age with Calciumate. With high levels of calcium and vitamin D3 to help strengthen bones. And flexi boosters to help support flexible joints. Maintain your flexi age. Time to take Calciumate. Alagang Unilab yan. You still look young, pero di mo alam, aging ka na pala inside. Kung meron ka ng, uh, at tuwing gagalaw, sign yan na ang flexibility ng bones and joints mo, hindi na tulad ng dati. Invest in your flexi age with Calciumate. With high levels of calcium and vitamin D3 to help strengthen bones. And flexi boosters to help support flexible joints. Maintain your flexi age. Time to take Calciumate. Alagang Unilab yan. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Dear Father, we thank you for everyone gathered here now. Thank you that you know each of us by name and have caused us to walk with you. We say that we are dependent on you and our trust is in you completely. As we surrender ourselves in adoration, we welcome you amongst us today and celebrate the gift of life that you lavish on us. We ask that you would open our eyes so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. Lord, we thank you for the speakers and facilitators. We pray that you would give them great inspiration as they share with us what you have placed in their hearts. We pray that you would fill them 
with courage and give them your peace. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our lay forum entitled Aging Gracefully, Beautiful Inside and Out. I am Dr. J.P. Almaria, your host. We have a lot in store for you. We have lectures that would guide you through common issues during menopause, and we also have beauty tips and makeup demo later. And if you stick around, we will have prizes to be given out coming from our sponsors, as well as our discount coupons from VRP Medical Center in order to promote women's health. Now let's get this show on the road. I call on the brain and the heart of this project, Dr. Susan Lazaga, to give us the opening remarks. Good morning. October is World Menopause Awareness Month. This is why our Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of the VRP Medical Center has made this event a flagship project for the past 12 years. We want to increase awareness and understanding of the menopause among our patients, friends, and loved ones. Let me just give you a brief background of what menopause is all about. Menopause is a normal, natural stage in every woman's heart life. According to the North America Menopause Society, menopause occurs between ages 45 to 58 years old in most women. However, there may be deviants like women can have it as early as 35 or late in their late 30, 30s. There are three stages of the menopause, the perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause. In the perimenopause, this occurs prior to the menopause, and the woman may have irregularities in her menstrual cycle and may now start experiencing hot flushes, night sweats, sleep problems like insomnia, mood changes, and vaginal dryness. Menopause is the second stage, and this is what happens when, when a woman has had no menstrual period for the past 12 consecutive months or for a full year. So this is the point of graduation. And after which is your postmenopause, which is the rest of a woman's life after the menopause. So why is it so important to be aware of menopause? While chances of living to a ripe old age of 90 or even to 100 plus is now possible with current medical advances, it is in the menopause that a woman has an increased risk to develop serious dreaded illnesses like heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, osteoporosis, dementia, which may lead to Alzheimer's, depression, to name a few. In the past years, our Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology had invited experts to talk on many of these concerns from the physical lifestyle changes, medical, mental, spiritual, and even sexuality in the menopause. This morning, our experts will discuss two of the common concerns we experience in the menopause, the genital urinary syndrome and skin health care. So, being in the twilight years of our life does not mean the end for us. Though menopause is in inevitable, aging gracefully is a choice. So may this day or may this morning be a most fruitful one for everyone. God bless this affair and good day to all. Thank you, Dr. Chuchi, for that great message. And now to give her welcome address, may I please turn over the virtual floor 
to our dear VRP Medical Center Hospital Administrator, Ms. Veronica Regina Verhel de Dios Garcia. Congratulations to the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology for your painstaking preparations for this yearly celebration of the Menopause Awareness Month. Led by Dr. Susan Lazaga, the organizing committee chair for our Menopause Lay Forum, and Dr. Marinella Abad, the incumbent department chair. So pleasant good morning, everyone. The countdown for this event stops today as we now unveil the theme, Aging Gracefully Inside and Out, with our seasoned speakers to talk about interesting topics to take care of our skin and face, and of course, our inner health. For sure, we will all take home a lot of learning today. As we live longer, aging is naturally part of life, which we can face with grace and a cheerful attitude when we are well informed with facts and testimonials from professionals and experts. So this lay forum about this life stage for every woman's life is a gift and an opportunity to learn to live out and help us go through this life stage. I understand you will not only learn from today, but you'll also get a chance to win valuable prizes from our generous sponsors. Plus, of course, you will get discount vouchers for some pr procedures for women courtesy of the RP Medical Center. So without further ado, I welcome all of you who are tuned in to this webinar via Zoom or Facebook Live or in the VRP YouTube channel. I hope you all make the most out of this occasion and be beautiful inside and out. So happy Menopause Awareness Month to all women. Cheers. Cheers to you too, Ma'am Rana, and we thank you for your unending support and generosity to the project of the Department of OBGYN. Now, we move on to the program proper. Today, I have the privilege of introducing great speakers to give us insights on menopausal health and well-being. Our first speaker is Dr. Anna Belen Ignacio Alenzuela. Dr. Annabelle is a member of the POGS Board of Trustees and the present OBGYN Department Chair of Among Rodriguez Memorial Medical Center. She is also the treasurer of the Philippine Society of Climacteric Medicine and a professor in FAU Dr. Intanorius Medical Foundation Institute of Medicine. She is a fellow of several, several reputable societies such as the POGS, the PSRM, PSGE, PAT, and the Philippine Association of Academic Biochemists. Our second speaker is Dr. Mary Annie Fatima Cavellan Chua. She is a fellow of the Philippine Dermatologic Society and a member of the PDS Functional and Integrative Dermatology Interest Group. She is an associate member of the International Society of Dermatology. Dr. Kalyan Chua is the head dermatologist at the AC Skin Health. She is likewise affiliated at the Skin and Nutrition in Mandaluyong. And we have an additional session for today. Makeup made easy by our makeup artist, Mr. Keisuke. He, she, or Mr. Case. For our first lecture on being beautiful on the inside, exploring the genitourinary syndrome of menopause, let me now call on Dr. Anna Belen Ignacio Alenzuela. Good morning, everyone. I'm back. And this time we're going to have a very exciting topic sexual health in the menopause. Dr. Alenzuela, old people should not have sex. That is not right. You know, I wouldn't be surprised because earlier, Pfizer conducted a study and asked this question, and most Asians said, yes, old people should not have sex. And I am going to tell you that is not correct. In 20 minutes or so, we will have three sections, and these would be the things that I would be focusing on. So let's go. Let's talk about sexual health, 
what is the genitourinary syndrome of the menopause and why do women lose their libido during menopausal period you know the world health organization recognizes that dapat we should have sexual health it is a state of physical emotional mental and social well-being in relation to sexuality sexual health doesn't mean you don't have a disease sexual health doesn't mean you don't have a dysfunction kailangan well-being now my question to you are you healthy my dear friends sexually are you Pfizer asked people how important is sex in their lives and 80 percent of men said it's very important whereas 60 percent of women said it's not that important so if you are going to compare the man's brain with the woman's brain the center of the man's brain is on sex on dami dami we have chocolates flowers jewelries Ako, i'll probably have a bit bigger load for my shopping okay so what is libog ang bastos mo naman doctora what's wrong with that you know what's wrong with filipinos when it's in filipino bastos okay when it's in english scientific libido libido is defined as an instinct a psychic energy na it comes from our primitive biological urges in other words animal instinct yun daw yung libido our desire to have sex for pleasure okay so yun po ang libido hey, doctora, ang sex drive kasi nawawala na well yes sex drive de decreases okay it decreases both for men and women. It's just that for women, it decreases three times more likely than the male counterpart. Editora, kasi pag nagmenopause na, wala na, patay na ang sex drive. I beg to disagree. So, bakit ba nawawala ng libido ang babae? There are two main focus why a woman will have loss of libido. Emotion, physical emotion she doesn't have the desire anymore why because nahihirapan siyang ma-arouse and she gets frustrated with everyday stress that's why she will not be interested in sex anymore another reason why she will have a loss of libido is because of her vaginal dryness her vagina is dry and when there is penetration she will be in pain her vagina is dry, the vaginal wall will also be thin, therefore she will have a painful intercourse. That's why she loses interest in sex. Of course, if you would look at different uh, publications, marami silang sinasabi na reason why a couple will have losses of libido. Pwedeng dahil sa stress, they're ashamed, they're both overweight. Uh, they're taking medications, meron ng hypertension, meron ng diabetes, at kung ano-ano pa. But I guess the most important there is relationship status. That's why these are also things that a gynecologist should address. And all of these changes are because of losses of estrogen. Blame it on estrogen. Remember I told you a while ago about the blood supply? When a woman goes through menopause, she will have hot flashes because the blood supply to her brain is low. Ganon din po sa vagina. Because she will have loss of estrogen, konti na lang ang blood na pupunta sa vagina. Dahil konti na lang ang blood na pupunta sa vagina, ang vagina ay manunuyo. Tapos imbis na flexible siya, magiging matigas na siya. ba? Alam niyo yung mga surfaces na na dry na. Pagkatapos po nun, maiiba pa po ang kanyang pH, ang pH ng vagina niya. Magiging alkaline ang kanyang pH. And this is not good for her. Bakit po ba, doktora? Anong mangyayari? What will happen if the lining of her vagina becomes thin? When a woman goes through menopause, her estrogen goes down. Then when her estrogen goes down, the blood supply to the vagina goes down. Dahil konti na lang ang blood supply sa vagina, yung lining niya ninipis. 
The vaginal lining is very important because it contains glycogen. Ang glycogen po ay pagkain ng bacteria sa vagina. What, doktora? May bacteria ang vagina? Oo, di ba? May bacteria yan. Ang bacteria niyan ay normal lactobacilli. Hindi po siya yung nasa yakult, di ba? Oo, pare, pareho lang. Well, it's the same kamag-anak but it's not yakult. So, yung lactobacilli po na yun, ang kinakain niya yung glycogen sa vagina. Kailangan po kasi acidic ang vagina so that the lactobacilli will be alive. You know, lactobacilli guides the vagina from all kinds of infection. As long as lactobacilli is alive, wala po makakapasok na ibang infection dyan. Even the E. coli coming from the butt. Okay. So, kaya nga po sabi nila, may asim pa. Di ba? May asim ka pa, girl. Because our vagina should be acidic in nature. Now, when we go through menopause, all of this will be lost. Kaya po, kung titignan nyo muli ang inyong vagina, hindi na ganyan ang itsura niya ngayon. Kulubot na, dry na, pangit na. Lubog, luwa, parang pumapalakpak. Doktora naman, pumapalakpak ka dyan. That's true. Parang hindi naman po yata totoo yan, doktora. But that's true. It happens. Yung vagina mo na dating mahihain at makimi, bulagsak na ngayon. Open arms. ba diba? pumapalakpak pa. It is wrinkled. It is dry. It doesn't look good. One more thing. Wrinkle. Gusto natin ang may wrinkle. Ayaw natin. Alam niyo ba, our vagina inside is different. When we grow old, nawawalan po ng wrinkles ang ating vaginal canal. And this is something that we don't like. Kasi po, dapat yung vagina ngayon para siyang accordion. Na kailangan kulukulubot siya. Para pagpasok ng penis, mababanat siya. Tapos lalabas ulit. Mababanat, lalabas ulit. Pagka ganyan pong kasmooth at walang wrinkle ang inyong vagina, it's going to be painful to have sex. So, opposites. May wrinkle sa labas, walang wrinkle sa loob. These are things that's happening to a woman's vagina when she goes through menopause. And because of this, yung lining ng vagina niya nagiging mahina. So, pagpasok, okay. Ang nangyayari, pagpasok ng penis, mapupunit. May problema pa kasi because she is menopausal, she it's dry. So pag kiss-kissin mo, yung dalawang dry na surface na yan ay masakit talaga. So she will end up having vaginal pain, parang merong burning sensation, tapos may mga hiwa-hiwa, at pag ihi niya masakit, and she will be irritated, and she can even have vaginal bleeding. That's why she loses interest in sex. One more thing. Comparing a man and a woman, ang lalaki po kasi parang light switch yan. Switch it on, titigas na yan. Ang babae po kasi parang plancha. It takes a while before a woman is stimulated. So you have to stimulate her. And the most common point of stimulation for a woman is her clitoris. Now when the woman goes through menopause, the blood supply to the clitoris is also decreased. And because the blood supply to the clitoris is decreased, magkakakalyo siya, kakapal siya, right? Nagiging, mas, mas mahirap siyang i-stimulate. And because it's more difficult to stimulate, she will not be lubricated, she will be dry. Tapos, meron may may pang problema sa loob. That's why she loses interest in sex. So, my dear friends, it is not the sex drive that's the problem. It's the vagina. Her vagina is dry. She wants to have sex, but her vagina is stopping her from having sex. Sexual function also becomes worse as she advances through menopause. So kung hindi po ito maintindihan ng kanyang kapartner, it will start marital problems. I always tell my patients that sex is something beautiful. It is an expression of their love for each other. So the more frequent that they have sex, the closer they are. So dapat mas dadalasan ang sex. But if she is having a problem and the husband does not want to address it, her partner does not want to address it, mahihirapan po ang ating pasyente. 
So, how can we help? Come to us. Magpakonsulta po kayo. You need to be healthy. And sexual health is your right. According to the World Health Organization, dapat po, importanteng component ng kabuoan mo is your female sexuality. It is a basic human right. You need to be helped. You come to us, your gynecologists, and for your husbands, for your partners, encourage your partners to come to us. Because hindi po dapat mag-suffer ang inyong sexual life. Pwede po namin kayong tulungan. We are here to help you. Meron pang other home remedies na sinasabi nila aside from having regular sex, of course, dapat cotton underwears na, okay? Yung mga tibak, huwag ka nang magtitibak at huwag ka nang magtutong. Pwede siguro uniform, di ba? Parang signal ninyo mag-asawa. You know, uh, before I go to the uniform, one more thing, you have to ask for sex if you want it. Diba? Hindi naman nakakababa. You are a married couple. Asawa mo yan. So, you should be able to ask for sex if you want to have sex. Tapos, sabi ko nga, use a cotton underwear, a comfortable underwear. You don't need to use the thongs. Pwede isuot mo na lang siya pag gusto makipag-sex sa husband mo. Diba? Parang uniform. Okay? O kaya, pwede din namang baguhin mo yung washing products mo. Don't use, you know, treat your vagina as if it was your mouth, alright? Don't use harsh soap. Pero hindi ko naman po sinabing gamitan nyo ng toothpaste ang inyong vagina para lang bumango, okay? Just use mild soap and wash it with water, okay? Uh, don't be scared to use uh, moisturizers, ba? Para mawala yung kulubot ng vagina. And of course, dahil po estrogen, ang dahilan kung bakit nangulubot yan, nawalan kayo ng estrogen, of course, estrogen po ang kapale. Um, meron po bang natural food, doktora, na pagkukuhaan ng estrogen? Yes, yung mga soya. Yan. Yeah. Sabi nila, this is uh, the natural estrogen that we have. I think I will never stop saying, go and have regular sexual activity. Because this is the only guaranteed way to maintain vaginal health. So, doktora, pwede po akong gumamit ng mga lubricant? Yes. Iba po yung moisturizer, iba po yung lubricant. Okay? Ang moisturizer, ilalagay po palagi, even without sex. Ang lubricant, ilalagay po bago po mag-sex. So, what you can do, pwede pong ikaw ang maglagay sa vagina mo or yung husband mo ang maglagay sa vagina or pwede din namang ilagay mo yung lubricant sa pinis ng, ng, ng husband mo. So, this can be a part of foreplay for you and your husband. Doktora, nakakahiya. Ba't nakakahiya? You know, this is the time when the kids are away, when the kids are all adults. Sa inyo na ang buong bahay ulit, di ba? You can have sex anywhere. Pwede sa kusina, sa kung saan sa. Just make sure that you lock the door. Um, doktora, ano pa ba yung mga uh, moisturizer na pwede kong gamitin? Sabi nila, pwede daw ang olive oil, pwede ang coconut oil, di ba? Kahit na anong oil, pwede. Wag lang yung merong mga scents kasi irritating siya. At sabi ko nga, mm, dapat magkain kayo ng mga uh, phytoestrogens. They said garlic is a very good source of phytoestrogen. Pero wag mo naman ilalagay yung garlic dun sa baba, di ba? Kumain ka then brush your teeth before you have sex. Kasi nakakaya naman sa asawa mo, baka naman maamoy niya yung garlic.
bakit nahihirapan lalo ang couples? It's because of our culture. We think when we talk about sex, it's taboo, it's bastos. Second reason, when we talk about sex, we only think of penile penetration. That is not true. Hindi po lang penile penetration ang sex. There's so many forms of sex. Now, I would like to introduce you to the concept of sensate focus. Actually, this is a sexual behavioral therapy where they focus on sensual touching. Okay? Ito po is a program that is commonly used, an exercise that is commonly used for couples so that they can be closer to each other. Nasa libro po ito. This one uses touching of partners para mas maging familiar kayo with each other. So, what's the first step? Set the environment. Diba? Dapat yung physical space kalmado. Pwede kayong magpatugtog kung ano man yung favorite ninyong mag-asawa. Dapat quiet and you are in your privacy. Uh, ngayon, kung may taong iba sa bahay, syempre hindi pa pwede. Dapat nandun kayo in your room, in the privacy of your room. Now, the first step that you should do is non-genital touching. So, hahawak in areas na hindi part ng genitals, hindi kasama yung breasts ng wife mo. You should become attentive. You should become familiar with the touch of your partner. Ito pong sensate focus na to is an exercise that helps the husband and wife, the couple, so that they will become comfortable, uh, they will become more intimate, they will be more familiar with their own body. After that, pupunta na dun sa breast and genital touching. Pagkatapos nahawakan ng mga leeg, ang kamay, then it's time for you to touch the breasts and the genital area. Opposite, the husband touches the wife, the wife touches the husband. Now at this time, you remember I introduced you to the idea of the lubricant, di ba? Pwede pong isama yung application ng lubricant dito sa genital touch. The husband can put the lubricant dun sa may pinto ng langit in the vulva, right? Bago sakyan ang vulva, lagyan muna ng grasa <laughs> ng lubricant, right? And the wife can also do the same thing. She can apply the lubricant at the head of the penis. Okay, maganda po yan. That's step two. Then, after that, you will now be closer to each other. Be pwede pong back to chest ang position. Tapos, each one would touch the genitals. Yan po yung tinatawag na genital touching. And then, be pwede din po uh, na pagpasok po ng penis. Pag ready na yung wife, be pwede na pong ipasok ang penis. And the wife can help her husband. Kunyari, she can stimulate her clitoris. Okay? Be pwede pumasok lang tapos wala pang pumping kasi mahirap. Okay? Pero ito, it helps the couple become very, very familiar with each other. Be pwede din naman pong isama sa part ninyo ng sex ng mag-asawa masturbation with a partner. It is an effective way to tell your husband or to tell your wife uh, what you want him or her to do to you. Dapat kasi at this time, masasabi mo na kung ano yung gusto mo. Again, remember, in the privacy of your home. And eventually, you can become orgasmic. Ang nakakalungkot po kasi, um, not all women experienced orgasm. Why? Because not all men knows how to wait for a woman. As I have mentioned, nung younger years, mas ma mahirap pong i-stimulate ang babae. But the moment she gets stimulated, she can have multiple orgasm. Compared to the man, ang man isang orgasm lang talaga. When a woman is older, when a woman is menopausal, mas mahirap po siyang i-stimulate. That's why this sunset focus, the therapy, is very important. Hindi po ito bastos. 
this is for the couple. Kailangan po merong body exploration, merong genital self-exam, meron ding Kegels exercises, and self-pleasuring techniques to help you achieve orgasm so that you can enjoy sex. Again, this is a right. This is your right. So, doctora, paano po if it doesn't work? Or let's say, for example, uh, my symptoms are moderate to severe. Anong symptoms yon? Sa sexual dysfunction, dry na dry. Then this is the time when we have to give you the hormone that you have lost. Remember, I told you about the vasomotor symptoms, the hot flashes. This time, your vagina is crying out. Wala na siyang hormones. So, it's time for you to replace the hormones. But because the... So, Paano po yung hormone therapy, doctora? If the problem is only the vagina, penetration, manipis, then your doctor will give you a vaginal tablet. Okay? Now, if meron po kayong hot flashes together with the vaginal dryness, then pwede po kayong bigyan ng inyong doctor ng transdermal estrogen or oral estrogen. Hormone therapy is safe. Remember, your relationship is at stake. You got married because you found someone that you would like to spend the rest of your life with and he is here. Do something about it. Okay, I remember I told you, use it. Otherwise, you're going to lose him. You don't want to lose your husband. I would just like to warn the public. Meron to mga nakikita akong patients who come to me saying that they were given injectables, uh, testosterone pellets, and add the other concoctions. Please, please, no. Okay? Just make sure that you go to a gynecologist. Okay? Parang mga spa lang yan ng mga kung ano-ano, no. Okay? Kailangan po you go to a gynecologist, you go to a registered physician so that you can be given the right hormones. And if your physician is not familiar with the hormones, go to a reproductive medicine specialist. The third part, relationship issues. Of course, I said we are not just doctors. We are counselors as well. We have to identify, baka naman may iba pang problema. Kaya nagkakaroon siya ng sexual problem. Now, during counseling, you must talk to the couple. The wife, the husband. Baka naman meron silang so-called sexual double standard. Ano yung sexual double standard? Because of media, di ba, sa mga napapanood na porn, naakala mo eh, Ang sex ay para lang sa mga diyosa ng kagandahan. Ang sex ay para lang sa mga babaeng malalaki ang boobs at sa mga lalaking malalaki ang penis. That's not true. You have to educate your patient that they... Kaya nga nagturo tayo ng sensei focus because we want them to be comfortable with their body kahit na ano pang itsura niyan. Because she's not the only one aging. Her husband is also aging. Now, they can be encouraged to exercise together, to do things together, have sex, diba, together. Sex na naman. Of course, that's the, that's the answer. That's the solution. Another thing, baka meron pa silang ibang double standard. Ano yon? Meron sinasabi na performance anxiety. Now, mm, dahil sa napapanood na porn, diba, ahala na lang, ah, 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 puro ganun lang. So, nagkakaroon tuloy ng anxiety yung ating mga patients to perform so that they will show their husband that they are aroused. Diba? Na, 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 magaling kani. Diba? Kasi sa lalaki, yun ang kailangan eh. Kailangan na ma-assure siya na magaling siya in bed. Right? So, it's a conquering uh, thing for the man. So, ang babae naman, ang feeling niya, kailangan niyang mag-perform. Eh, baka kaka-perform man lang kaka-perform eh, hindi ka natuloy, di ba, mag-enjoy lalo. So, these are issues that you have to address. Tell the couple that they should be comfortable with their body. Self-concept, hindi po kailangan payap para mag-enjoy ng sex. Kahit naman malaki, eh, bakit naman ako pwedeng mag-enjoy ng sex, di ba? 
And finally, you should encourage them to communicate. Sometimes communication is the key so that they can be comfortable with each other. At this point in time, siguro mga 25 years na silang kasal, they should be together and they should have been together long enough to know what each other wants. So, dapat masasabi na nila, gusto nilang lahat ng masabi. So, for my final words, ulitin ko po, sexual health is important. Kagaya ng reproductive health. Women suffer in silence and this should stop. Kami pong mga clinicians are reaching out to you, telling you, come to us. Complain to us because we can help you. There are solutions to your sexual problems. May gamot, may non-pharmacological therapy, may mga exercise. We are here to help. Hindi lang po pang gamot. Baka pwede pong a shoulder to cry on. Somebody who will be here to listen to you. So, sa susunod, when you have sexual problems during the menopausal years, go to your gynecologist. We are here, ready to help you, so that you can live happily ever after. Magandang magandang umaga po, si Dr. Ana Belen Ignacio Alenzuela po muli. Thank you! I agree with you, Dr. E.V. Sexual health is indeed important. And thank you for giving that thought-provoking lecture. So for our second lecture on being beautiful on the outside, caring for your skin in the menopause, let me now call on Dr. Ami Cagayan Chua. Okay. Hello. Good morning. So first, I want to thank the VRP, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, for inviting me to speak in today's lay forum. So today, I was tasked to talk about caring for the skin in the menopause. So this is my topic for today. Um, I will try to discuss all of this within the time allotted. So, it may be frustrating to notice skin changes during menopause. Usually, menopause occurs around our 40s or older, and during this stage, we can already see signs of aging. So, aging can be divided into intrinsic and extrinsic aging. Intrinsic aging is our genetics, and the inevitable or yung hindi na mapipigilan na pagtanda natin. Extrinsic aging is largely from the environment, so this is from the sun, or what we call photo-aging, and other lifestyle factors such as diet um, and stress and smoking. And in menopause, as we all know, there is decline in estrogen, and this decline amplifies the skin changes of aging. So during menopause, women experience loss of collagen and decrease in elastin. These two are very important in the supporting matrix of the skin. Collagen is what gives skin plumpness and structure. The rapid loss of collagen can lead to fine lines and wrinkles or cause sagging. So women at this stage may have dry and less plump skin. First, dry, itchy skin. In menopause and in aging in general, skin loses some ability to hold water, so skin can get quite dry. When skin is dry, it is more sensitive and prone to irritation. Hence, having itchy skin is more common during this stage. The following can help combat dry skin. So wash with a mild liquid cleanser instead of a bar soap. 
for mature skin kasi bar soaps can be too drying. Avoid taking long showers and hot baths. Apply moisturizer after bathing and throughout the day when your skin feels dry. A diet rich in omega-3, so this is your salmon, your mackerel, your sardines, this can also improve skin moisture. Again, these are the important bath habits we can adapt to avoid getting dry, itchy skin. So use a mild hypoallergenic unscented cleanser. So usually we prefer liquid cleansers. Avoid long and hot baths. Usually we want to limit our baths to less than 10 minutes. And avoid scrubbing. So don't use your face towels or loofah. When is the best time to apply your lotion or moisturizer? So the best time is immediately after bathing while skin is damp. If you can, no, apply your lotion within three minutes after taking your shower. So this is very important for your lotion to be effective. Here are some of the ingredients we look for in a good moisturizer. So hyaluronic acid, shea butter, niacinamide, ceramides, dimethicone, lactic acid, argan oil, rosehip oil, and oats. Next is acne. Unfortunately, because of the hormonal changes during menopause, women may still get acne during this time. So the management will be dependent on the severity of acne. For mild acne, so if you only get one or two pimples or active papules, so you can use over-the-counter products uh, such as those containing benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, azelaic acid, niacinamide, and even sulfur. For moderate to severe acne, you will need to visit your dermatologist so she can create a treatment plan suited for you. Your dermatologist will most likely recommend a complete skincare regimen, and if really severe or needed, she may give oral medications as well. You may also be recommended to undergo some procedures to clear your skin of acne. So you can get regular facials, um, chemical peels, acne lasers, and pimple injections. Next is skin pigmentation. So skin pigmentation is a result of both intrinsic and extrinsic aging. So intrinsic aging, also with the loss of um, estrogen or decline in estrogen, and extrinsic aging, from sun exposure. So the sun exposure we're talking about here is the cumulative sun exposure or yung exposure natin mula pa nung pagkabata. So not just the past two months, not just the past two weeks, it's the cumulative, no? yung lahat ng naging sun exposure natin over the years. So some examples of skin pigmentation changes are solar lentigo or age spots, melasma, and idiopathic gothic hypomelanosis. So solar lentigo, so this is how it looks like. So number one in the treatment and prevention is sun protection. Um, your doctor can also give you uh, the appropriate lightening creams and you can undergo procedures like chemical peel and lasers. Next is melasma. So a lot of people are... Um, suffering from melasma. So number one, again, in the treatment and management of, me of skin pigmentation is adequate sun protection. Um, also, you can use lightening creams and then procedures such as chemical peels and lasers may be done and your doctor may also give you supplements to help lighten your melasma. And this one, so if you can look at the picture, you can see the white spots or the white macules in this picture on the legs. So this is what we call idiopathic gutate 
hypomelanosis. So this is commonly seen on sun-exposed areas such as the legs, the arms. It can all be, also be seen on the back and on the shoulders. So the way to prevent this is, again, through adequate sun protection. Even on our hair, menopause has its effects. So loss of hair, where we want hair, and development of hair, where we don't want it. So we have thinning of the scalp hair and development of facial hair. Thinning of the scalp hair, or in this case, um, androgenetic alopecia, or female pattern hair loss. So usually we see this as widening of the hair gap or receding of the hairline. So this can be caused by several factors um, such as genetics, um, our age, uh, our hormones like in menopause, even our nutritional status and stress level. So when your doctor sees you, she might give you minoxidil and supplements and also recommend hair treatments that can be done at the clinic. Hirsutism or male pattern hair growth, especially on the lips and on the chin, and it can also be seen on the cheeks. So this can be managed by waxing or plucking the hairs out, or we usually recommend laser hair removal. So if you want more permanent results, you can get laser hair removal because sometimes as we get older, our skin gets thinner and more sensitive. So waxing may um, irritate our skin. So laser hair removal may be a better option. It is very important to note that you have to have to get the laser hair removal before your hair turns white. So once your hairs are already white, no laser will be effective in removing it. And lastly, we will discuss Wrinkles, jowls, and sagging lines. So women's skin loses about 30% of collagen during the first five years of menopause. After that, the decline is more gradual. So we lose about 2% of collagen every year for the next 20 years. So this illustrates the possible changes we may develop with aging and menopause. Loss of collagen and elastin will result in wrinkles and sagging of the skin. So we see the hollowing of the temple, the hollow, hollowing under the eyes, the loss of cheek fullness. So you see flattening, deeper nasolabial fold, which is from the nose to the mouth, downturned mouth corners, and marionette lines. So marionette lines is from the corner of the mouth down and jowls or the sagging here, and loss of jawline definition. Best strategy is to start early. So start taking off your skin even before you reach menopause. So invest in your collagen bank, so to speak. An effective anti-aging skincare regimen is a good foundation for any plan. So these uh, are the available skin actives we can use. So for sensitive skin, you may be better using retinol, retinaldehyde, retinyl palmitate, and bakuchiol. For resistant and oily skin, you can use tretinoin and adapalene. So again, start early. So women in their 20s can already start using creams and serums with vitamin C and vitamin E. Uh, women in their 30s and older can use retinol and peptides. And very important, always uh, are your moisturizers and sunscreens. For skin rejuvenation, so those who want to improve their skin texture, minimize pore size, correct pigment or discoloration, and fine wrinkles, the following can be done. So facials, chemical peels. Chemical peels are very good in improving your skin rejuvenation, uh, skin texture, lightening your marks and fractional CO2. So we offer this in the clinic. 
For wrinkles, I always tell my patients, especially those with very expressive faces, do not wait for the permanent lines or creases to appear before you get your wrinkles treated. Because once you have these permanent lines, it's already very difficult, more expensive to treat, and may not be even reversible anymore. So for wrinkles, uh, Botox is the best treatment. We can also do these other procedures to help improve or prevent uh, development of wrinkles. So this is our patient in her 50s. She already had advanced wrinkles. So you can see the deep wrinkles here on her glabella. So she has powerful muscles. And compared with the after photos, she has less wrinkles even when she tries to frown. This is the same patient at rest. So her face is not showing any emotion here or not trying to move her face. Um, on baseline, you can see in the before photo, she already has some lines. And in the after photo, so this is at rest, um, her forehead is smoother and much nicer. This is one of our patients. So this one is in her 30s. She's very concerned with her frown line. So she says people think she is very masungit because of her wrinkles. So she wanted no frown lines. And after her treatment, she's very happy with the results. This patient is quite young. So she's in her 20s. But she has very expressive face. As you can see, she has deep wrinkles in the forehead. So without treatment, she's definitely bound to have the permanent deep creases. So treating it now will help her prevent getting those creases. So in the after photo, you can see she has no more wrinkles. Um, also, she has lighter skin here because of her of her skincare regimen, and we also did several sessions of chemical peel. So here are some of the procedures we do in the clinic to preserve the so-called triangle of youth, or the V-shaped face, or the hugis bigas look. Radiofrequency and cavitation are part of our hydrofacial and MDNA facial and as an add-on to our other facials. So radiofrequency heats up the skin and induces skin tightening, while cavitation is used to break down fats. This is a relaxing treatment, so most patients fall asleep as it feels like a warm massage. For more permanent results, we recommend skin lift. Skin Lift is a high food treatment which uses high-intensity focused ultrasound to tighten and contour face. This is recommended to treat sagging skin in the neck area, the jaw, and the cheeks. It can also treat fine wrinkles. It can also be used on the body after weight loss, for example, uh, postpartum, or for those who lost a lot of weight. So we do skin lift in the clinic. We apply anesthesia first for about 30 minutes and the procedure takes about an hour. Here are some of our before and after patients. This is one of our patients with advanced sagging. So see the squaring of the face in the before photo. So she has deep nasolabial fold and loss of volume in the malar area or the upper cheek and sagging of the cheek and jaws, no sagging in the jaws. So the next day, the patient woke up happy to see a slimmer face, and this improvement is most appreciated after two to three months. So after three months, as you can see, the lifting is improved, um, shallower, nasolabial fold, and the patient has a slimmer V-shaped face. So we achieved a more youthful appearance for her. This is another patient, and this shows how the jawline can be effectively defined by uh, even just one session of skin lift high food. Thread lift is very popular nowadays. It is a non-surgical way of lifting and tightening your skin, and at the same time, it rejuvenates the skin. So patients 
love this because you can see the results faster. The photos here are taken one month apart. So see the shallowing of the nasolabial fold compared to the before and after. So there's a better contour of the cheeks. Like if you look at the upper cheek, the mid cheek, the jaw, the jaw is better defined. This is another patient who was happy with the results. I think she looks at least maybe five years younger after her thread lift. So there is better cheek contour, the jaw is tighter, and her chin has a better projection. So this is appreciated after a session of thread lift. The legendary Oprah Winfrey once said, uh, so many women I've talked to see menopause as a blessing. I've discovered that this is your moment to reinvent yourself after years of focusing on the needs of everyone else. So my dear audience, though we have learned about the many skin changes we will experience with menopause in the coming years, there are a lot of treatments now that we can do to help us manage these changes. So this is my team of doctors at AC Skin Health. Currently, we are a team of five dermatologists and one plastic surgeon. And you can visit our website and like us in Facebook and follow us in Instagram. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Abby. That lecture makes me want to go to the dermatologist right away. Thank you to the two speakers for those great talks. Uh, may I please call on both Dr. Aigi and Dr. Ami to the virtual floor for the open forum. Spotlight on all of us, please, to Dr. Sini. Hi, Dr. Aigi, Dr. Ami. Thank you so much for, for those lectures. Uh, I think the sexual health and uh, skin care, they're the two most um, not focused um, uh, concern in the menopause because the concern is always about um, cardio, meron ka na bang diabetes, cancer prevention. So that's why I think uh, this is a good topic so that we can also focus on what makes us beautiful inside and out. Yes, um, I agree. Yeah. So Dr. Igi, I think we have a question um, at the Q&A box. Dr. Abby can also answer. Um, our uh, participant is asking, how can we prevent the jock itch between groin area or the hyperpigmentation in our gifts? Jock itch. Uh, cleanliness. Uh, it's, it's very important that uh, it has to be kept clean, especially when we are going through menopause. Sometimes, kahit na naligo ka na, the sides, the seeing it, right? It's, it's really wet. You have to keep it dry and keep it clean. You have to also check whether you have uh, a diabetes because most of the time that can be a cause of, uh, of the itch as well. Now, if you're somebody who is just going through the skin uh, removal, Dati, wala kang mga ganun, tapos nag-start ka pa lang, then that can be a reason why you have also those, okay? But I guess the best for me is clean it and keep the area dry. Thank you, Dr. Anything to add, Dr. Ami? Um, I agree with Dr. Alenzuela. No? So you have to keep the area clean and dry. So for those who uh, exercise usually, and then when they don't, take off their gym clothes right away, then that can be an environment that will be more prone to development of fungal infection. So for those the one who are really prone to fungal infections, despite having a good hygiene, they can also use powder to keep the area dry. So for they can start with just the plain baby powders or antifungal powders. These are available in drugstores. Or even the cornstarch powder. I don't know if they yes. still have that. Uh, diba? Yeah. Parang mm -hmm. wala na yata eh. Because I, I used to... Hindi pala cornstarch... Yeah, it's a cornstarch powder. Pwede rin doktora. Yun lang hyperpigmentation. I really do not know how to answer that. Um, that why are you having hyperpigmentation? 
Yes. The hyperpigmentation, if it's because of the hormonal changes, then it's a bit difficult to um, prevent unless we address the hormonal imbalance. But if it's because of friction, then we can try using clothes that will uh, prevent the friction. No? Yung, wag yung medyo tight clothes or sometimes the underwear is you, you can choose like a cotton material which is nicer to the skin instead of yung iba medyo lace pa which can increase the friction <laughs> increase yes. the friction oh, mag lace ka na lang pag gusto mo makipag sex pero pang araw araw kahit na mami pa ma'am <laughs> diba sabi nga nila grand, <laughs> granny shorts <laughs> yung maluwang mm -hmm. Gamitin na lang yung costume, doktora, di ba? Oh, pag oh, na ng costume, yes. Yeah. Oh, para, okay. ano, Mark, oh, di ba, magka-Halloween, ibahin mo costume para ma-engano <laughs> ang husband mo. <laughs> Dr. Iggy, we have a question in the ano, FB Live. No? She's asking about vaginal dryness. Uh, what can we do about vaginal dryness? And she's asking if there are some oral medications that can be taken for vaginal dryness. Vaginal dryness, as I have mentioned, that's going to be dry because wala nang blood supply. Okay? So number one, you can apply moisturizer. Kung nagmo-moisturizer ka sa skin, di moisturizer din dun sa ba? Baba, anong klaseng moisturizer? Kung anong pang-moisturize mo sa face, yun din ang pang-moisturize mo sa vagina. Okay? Well, syempre, unscented yung nilalagay natin na moisturizer. I mentioned, you use it every day. We want to increase the blood flow. That's why I am encouraging sex. Because kasi pagka nagsi-sex, mas, mas, mas gaganda ang blood flow ulit sa vagina. So sa umpisa, masakit. But if you do it frequently, then hindi na siya magiging masakit. Um, so kung masakit sa umpisa, aside from daily, uh, so pag nag-apply ka ng moisturizer sa muka, mag-apply ka din ng moisturizer sa baba. Every day on. If you're taking care of your whole body with the skin, you do it also down there. Okay? Keep that uh, area moisturized. But not really uh, wet na wet. Ako kasi ang sinasuggest ko for my patients, they apply it at bedtime. After they take a bath, before they retire. Kasi medyo makapagpawisan, uncomfortable pagka daytime. Tapos pagkalagay ng moisturizer, konti lang naman, manipis lang. Then don't wear underwear na at night time para siya mas uh, maaabsorb okay kagaya ng sinabi ni doktora it's best to be applied when the skin is clean when the skin is a little bit dry uh, ano pa ba yung tanong vaginal dryness lang ano yon tsaka sex may oral may oral may oral meds ba na pwedeng gamitin um okay pagka po kasi vagina lang or genito urinary syndrome tawag po diyan GSM na ngayon dati tinawag kasi siyang vaginitis or atrophy. Pag hindi mo ginamit, mawawala sa sarado. Okay? So, anong ibibigay natin na replacement? Mas safe po na vaginal tablet. Our Filipinas are very, very afraid of applying anything in the vagina. Tandaan niyo po, pag yung tablet pinalagay sa vagina, dun lang ang effect nun. Pag ang tablet pininom mo, buong katawan mo may effect noon. So, mas may side effect ang tablet. Of course, there are times when we need to give the tablet and there are times when we only need to give the vaginal cream. So, pag vaginal lang ang problema, vaginal cream. Pero pag may kasamang hot flashes, at saka kunyari, medyo may osteoporosis, ay oral na yung binibigay natin. And then for that oral medication to the participant, you have to see us in the clinic. No? Uh, we need to properly counsel you regarding these medications. Yes. Thanks, Dr. Thank so you. For Dr. Ami, um, since na mention well, creams with vitamin C, vitamin E, they're encouraged. Yung role naman ng oral supplementation, vitamin C and E, um, will it yes. be an alternative then? Um, I wouldn't say an alternative, but since now we want like a holistic, no, parang all, all, all asset aspects, um, na address natin. So it's better if you also take supplements, or much better if you eat a diet that is rich in antioxidants, no. So you eat a lot of vegetables and fruits, different colors of vegetables and fruits in a week. That is best, plus the topicals. 
So I wouldn't say one is better than the other. I I, I would suggest you take both. No pareho. May ina apply ka, and then you're also doing a good diet. Or if hindi kaya ng diet, at least magtetake kay ng vitamins. Okay. I would like to add to that. Mm-hmm. Tingin nyo ba yung lahat ng mga menopausal ay hindi pala. Um, there's a lot of menopausal women around sa Philippines na lang. Yung mga kabatch sila. Snooki Serna, sila Don Zulueta, even Gretchen Barreto is already menopause. Lumaog pa tayo si J-Lo. Malagay niyo yeah. ganun lang sa kagan. ba? Diba? She's menopausal. Mm-hmm. Right? Just malagay mo gaganda siya ng ganun, ng magic lang. Hindi, di ba? I'd yeah. rather take all of these supplements, which is also very beneficial for a menopause. Hindi lang menopausal women. Kailangan talaga natin antioxidants. I'm so happy that you've mentioned that. And I'm also happy with the hyaluronic acid. Kailangan yan from head to foot hanggang sa vagina. Kasi mm-hmm. kung maghahanap nga po kayo ng moisturizer, kung yung, yung nga pinapahid mo na may hyaluronic acid sa mukha, hanggang doon, wag lang ipapasok sa vagina, hanggang labas lang po tayo ang moisturizer, ang pumapasok lang yung lubricant pag magsesex na. Dr. Igi, how about ano, vaginal rejuvenation? Di ba mm. meron ng mga vaginal rejuvenation or these therapies that can be given to uh, patients? What are your thoughts about it? Okay, vaginal rejuvenation. Ang aim po ng vaginal rejuvenation is buhayin ang namatay. ba? Diba? Buhayin ang vagina, dag, dagdagan ang wrinkle. Magbabayad ka ng libo-libong piso para magka-wrinkle ang vagina mo. Kasi pagka nagka-wrinkle yung vagina sa loob, mag, mag, magiging firm siya uli. Babalik siya uli. Um, yes, you can go for that. But please, ang appeal ko lang po, is you have to go to the right physician. Ang dami-dami po kasing machines na nagkalat. Okay? I do not know with dermatology. I know that there are groups of dermatologists who does this, but there are also groups of gynecologists who are in aesthetic surgery. Okay? So meron po tayong group ng gynecologists that are accredited for that. Uh, yun lang po ang medyo mahirap po sa Pinoy. Gusto mura. Hindi lahat ng mura maganda. Lahat ng mura galing sa China. I joke! <laughs> <laughs> Pero di ba kailangan mong puhunanan ang kagandahan? Yes, correct. No? Siguro let's go to centers that are really um, accredited to do yes. this procedure. Yes, no? lang ang Kagaya ng mga, yan, nadinig nyo. Ay, naku, sinabi ni Doktora, magpapaano ko, glue sa tayo. E eh, di ba meron pa lang mga, meron pa lang mga spa na mapapavitamin C drip ka. Mm, yes. Oh, diba, merong mga spa na magpapaglue sa drip. Oy, mag-ingat po kayo. E eh, pag may nangyari sa inyo, hindi po doktor yung mga yon, mm-hmm. Diba, hindi naman komo na ipasok lang sa ugat ninyo. Pwede na. Pwede ko kayong mag-embolism. Pwede mag-infection. Aba, ingat-ingat. So for those patients who are interested about this, talk to your doctor. Sabay nyo na yung concern nyo na to para we can direct you to the correct centers if we think it, it, it's uh, something that you should be getting. So, kay Dr. Ami naman, um, we have a participant who asked for sagging skin, which is better daw po, all, all therapy or thermage? Ah, okay. So, actually, may bago na ngayon, may isa pa, yung soft wave. <laughs> so, all therapy or high fu, it's more for facial contouring. Si Thermage, medyo mas superficial kasi yung reach niya, no? yung nahihit niya na level ng skin. So, it is more for like um, skin texture and onting skin tightening. But if you're really for sagging, medyo more advanced sagging, I would suggest uh, deeper like uh, Ulthera or Haifu. Um, soft wave is a newer generation, although it was not asked, no? pero ang dami na kasi ngayong nag-o-offer ng soft wave. So soft wave is also like Ulthera in the sense that it's also ultrasound, but the depth is only 1.5 mm. So mas mababaw siya. But what they're saying is it's faster, it's easier, less painful. So parang um, okay din siya as an alternative. But in some centers, actually, they offer all three of that in one session. Pwede. Pwede siyang gawin. So, 
um, especially with advanced aging. So combination of treatments uh, is also sometimes the best approach. So I can say one is better than the other. Depends okay, so, on uh, what you want, no? Yes, uh -oh. So talagang magpakonsulta na po tayo sa ating derma so they can individualize the treatment, no? Depende sa concerns natin. Sara Igi, we have a question then sa FB. I think she ha she's a case of early menopause. Nagpatabi so ata po siya. Um, she's asking, since early menopause, concern pa din daw po ba niya dapat ang, ang vaginal dryness ng pag-lubricate or pag-moisten ng kanyang ano, vagina? Kahit wala siyang partner, dapat daw po ba niya itong concern pa? Of course. Okay. Um... It's a part of your body. It's a part of the skin, okay? Even if you don't have a sexual partner, when your vagina becomes dry, when two... Kasi yung vagina natin, it's a tube, di ba? Tapos naka, hindi naman yan nakabilog. Nakadikit yan. Nagkikiskisan. So pag nagkiskisan yung dalawang dry surfaces, ano mangyari? Dugo. Di ba? She can bleed, okay? And mind you, dapat kaya nga po sa umpisa pa lang, um mag-hormone therapy na po tayo. Ang unang-una pong indication pag nag para mag-hormone therapy is yung vasomotor symptoms. Pero just for our audience, kagaya po ng nabanggit, hindi po hot flash lang yun. Sa Filipino po kasi ang pinaka-common na symptom na nag-menopause nag, na, nag na, back aches yan at saka mga muscle pains. At saka yung parang kunang-kulang ka sa lakas, parang nanghihina ka, kasi baka hindi mo lang napapansin may hot flashes ka din. Ito ay mga symptoms that you are transitioning from a regular level of estrogen to a no level of estrogen. Therefore, you have to go to your doctor. And if you go to your gynecologist as early as now, then mapiprevent natin yung vaginal dryness in the future. Mapiprev ka gaya ng sinabi ni doktora, pati yung pagtag... Kasi 30% of our collagen will be lost in the first three years after magmenopause. So yan, patay na. Lahat ng collagen wala na. So, eh, sige, papalaklakin ka ng collagen. Di ba rin, doktora, lalaklak na lang ako ng collagen. Wala yun. Kasi kahit na uminom ka ng collagen, eh, kung walang karpintero, hindi mabibuild ulit yung collagen. So may oral tablet para dyan pag may vasomotor. Meron ding tableta na pampa-increase pa din ng libido. So you go to your gynecologist. Kayang-kaya po natin yan. So dun sa mga naoperahan po namin, no? balik na po kayo para yung iba nyo pong concern sa baka akala nyo hindi dapat sa pagtuunan ng pansin ay uh, mag-guide na po namin kayo kung anong dapat pang gawin. Oo, nahihiya kasi sila kasi tungkol sa vagina. Yes, di ba? Pag po, social, pag pupunta ako sa derma ko, di ba? Mm -hmm. Pag pupunta, check ako ng vagina ko. Yeah, it, it has to be normalized, eh, di ba, Dr. Yes, yes. That it's not, walang age limit ang sexual health. Yes. Dapat mahiya. Um, dapat pag-usapan. So, exactly. I think, ano, very, ano talaga, um, thought-provoking nga talaga itong naging lecture natin. Thank you. And then, Doctora Ami, siguro, ano, how frequent kaya should we see a dermatologist? For example, the menopause. As like, like what I mentioned kanina, usually takes a backseat eh. Sometimes, aunahin ko na lang muna yung check-up ko sa, mm -hmm. sa diabetes ko. No? Is yes. there, uh, parang see your derma once a year? May mga ganun ba na dapat tayong sinusunod? Yes. Um, I guess it depends on your goals, on what you want to achieve. But at least once, para lang alam mo, at least mabigyan ka ng skincare regimen, the basic and what you need to know. And then from there, yun nga, depende kung gusto mo bang maging mala Gretchen Barreto or Don Zulueta or just ano lang, then it depends on your goals kung how many times you need to visit your doctor. <laughs> You know, okay. there's always two things that I can pay. Meron kasi yung movie, da, meron TV series dati, The Golden Girls. Sino ba nakakakilala pa noon? Meron kasing apat na girl, may sitcom eh, Golden Girls. Mga 50 na sila, all white hair. But that's not the idea of a golden girl anymore. Ang golden girl, Don Sulweta, J-Lo. Di ba? Yan ang golden girl. Yes. Overall, ano talaga, health din. No? So, hmm. Uh, yun talaga talagang beautiful inside and out. So, 
Um, I think uh, we don't have any more time left for the open forum. Thank you. Thank you to our two gracious speakers, Dr. Iggy and Dr. Ann. You've lightened up our games and you've given us a thing or two to think about uh, regarding sexual health and behavior. We hope to invite you soon again so you can share your knowledge and expertise with us here in BRP Medical Center. Always a pleasure for BRP. Face-to-face -face or virtual, nandito ako kasama niyo lagi. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Iggy. Dr. Ami? Thank you also. I learned a lot also from today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think um, it's time for us to take a break first from the lecture and draw out winners for a raffle. So the winners have been pre-drawn already. We hope you're still online so that you can be eligible to win the prizes. So we have five, uh, we are going to be giving out five boxes of Krispy Kreme donuts from BioFam. The winners are the following JD, Miss Marita, Miss Jasmine, Miss Marietta, and Miss Christine. Congratulations. And then we'll also be giving out medications coming from our sponsors, BioFam, for Primavit. Something to address your hot flushes. We have five winners Miss Donna, Nanita, Eden, Azel, and Lucia. Congratulations. Next, please. Five winners, uh, four winners. Um, Scalchamine to improve your bone health. Our four winners are Joyce, Narisa, Loida, and Isa. Congratulations. And Hemerate. Our winners are Miss Gretel, Lucia again. Wow, Carissa and Ouija. Hi, Ouija. Okay, ma from Indonesia. Okay, and we'll be giving out four diffusers from BioFam. Our winners are Dr. Edna, Dr. Teresita Vier, Miss Mary Jane, and Miss Jenny. Congratulations. So to the winners, the organizers will get in touch with you, Dr. Suni Abelard. Now let's pause from the raffle and have our session today. Let's be pretty with our makeup artist, Mr. Keiske. Take it away, Mr. Keiske. Can we unmute Mr. Keiske? He's with one of our consultants. Dr. Santa Cruz, Hello. thank you for joining us, Dr. I Okay. Uh, let's start the uh, uh, model. At this age, for uh, at this rate, I know at this moment, for uh, like in a pop now, and then things, para Spanish, English, para everything will be observed. Uh, and although uh, do you see any uh uh regarding the setting laws uh it can it can I'm 
Right away, we will put on the forward product for all the product for Right now, one, 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 Apply That's Tapos, maghihit tayo sa T-Zone. T-Zone muna. Para ma-highlight yung interface. Para mag-magnify yung kids, kailangan mag-magnify yung kids. And we need most powder, six powder, and six powder. So try to sleep on the back of our system. Okay, it's time for loose powder, fake powder. So, Mr. Case, kaya ano yung una natin in-apply before yung loose powder? The same time, Uh, 
Next is Roy Bird. Para lang mahal Bird. Mas kaos ang face niya. Ni Bolbert Dordu also. Don't forget. Transfection. Ross. Forehead. Packing this blend, blend, and then I have to blend it well. On the nose. Now it's time for blush. Use a deep tone blush by Anas. Pumatas ng tignan. Mas lalo siyang enhance. Youthfulness na. So, Mr. Case, kaya ako yung makeup for everyday, no? What can you say about your flash on? It's glowing. For eyeshadows, depends na lang kung anong uh, gusto niyang kulay. Pero, for me, mostly for a, for a sweet color po, it's brown. And, minsan, I'm using only pa. So, light brown sa shade para sa kanya. But this time, ay gamit ako na ah, uh, a reddish color brown with shimmer para mas magtan at alayit ng eyes niya. Now, let's make our eyeshadow. Maka-request po kayo. Sabihin niya lang po sa akin. Tanong niya lang po. Maka-question po pa kayo. Kahit ano, wala man kayong brush, pwede yung fingertips, basta ring finger, pwede na yun. Ring finger will be like this. Nakakapag-blend na po siya. Pero kung yes, kung bumili ang brush, mayroon po kayong brush plan, much better po. 
So do you advise sir by na kapag ka mas singkit may eyeliner or para mas lumaki yung eyes na lang? Prefer to put eyeliner. It's a good shape for the rather than a way. Because it's a lot of <laughs> Tapos, uh, the technique I'm using kasi is mas maganda kung gusto nyo mas lumaki mata magpar. Kagamit po kayo ng white eyeliner para mag-eye ng mga coffee eyes sa mga chinita dyan. Kagamit po tayo ng white eyeliner. Tapos, never use full I like Talaga Very hard fashion, which is better now, liquid or powder uh, foundation. Use full powder for the eyeshadow. Without a match, is it the liquid or the powder foundation? For me, I'm using liquid foundation first. Saka ako gagamit ng powder foundation. Ang um, powder foundation, ginagamit ko lang yung mostly pang retouch sa face. Tapos yung liquid as acting as a base for me, any kind of beat up. Yun. Kasi, if ano nagsimula ka sa powder foundation without any base, it make it more less each ano, each every hour, every minute, ano, parang gano'n. <laughs> So it makes it full as agad. <laughs> then, mascara na tayo. Now. Yeah. 
a partir de la normalización. Kasi na wala na ako kayo sa blood, pwede niyo po kayo na po sa blood. Parang drunk blood si blood. Kaya ako sa mga ito. Parang sobrang simple at sobrang fresh lang. Balikan natin yung blood. Pag kinusta ito para, pwede ka na mapilik niya. Baka magulat ang mga pasyente. Okay, di ako sila lang. Sayang, pwede ba naman ngayon? Then, now, kila. May talo po ba kayo ng hot browns? Meron po ba kayong tanong sa brows? Regarding sa brows, kasi parang ano eh, uh, depende yan sa shape ng face mo. Oo, depende sa shape ng face. Ang brows kasi is mas, uh, mas dapat ng mga kung ano yung dis- nakadesign na buhok para sa anong na shape sa inyo. Ibig sabihin, yun yung talagang bagay para sa inyo na shape. Tapos, uh, sa huli naman, regarding sa, ano, sa brow shape naman ngayon, is kailangan nyo na uh, dapat ka huli ng roots nyo. Kasi yung iba doon, uh, yung iba minsan, ang ginagawa is malayo na sa, sa root shape ng, ano, ng, uh, ng uh, buhok nila. Tapos sa kanila i-apply na tighter sa, ano, sa brow, tapos darker yung roots. Uh, hindi po siya nagko-complement masyado doon sa ano sa looks na sa brows para pag nga no mag-even po siya. Yun. So, I'm using dark brown shade naman para masundan ko yung roots niya. How about the colors, sir? What can you advise? About the colors of the brows. Kina niyo mas mas complement yung roots na nandiyan. Isa roots na at sa kaya niyo sa brows na. Kasi kapag mga magkamit pa wala, iba kung magkamit na light brow tapos medyo makulat pa lata. So, hindi siya nag-even doon sa, ano, sa, sa roots. Parang, eh, mas na-emphasize yung kulay ng brows. Na-emphasize yung kulay ng brows. Rather ng, ano, yung pinaka-outcome talaga ng brows. Yan. O, oh, shaking naman, nagaling naman. Practice makes first and everyday naman. Siguro, kailangan niyo naman yung brows niya. Diba? Okay. Okay. Mas uso na yung makapal. Oo, so, yung mas malapal. Kasi the, the fuller the brows, the younger you look. Ganun po ngayon. Basta ako mature yung super-native score. So, dapat, uh, 
I mean, kung ano kung kaya nyo po na mag-pull yung brows mo, mas much better po kasi mas magmumukha po kayong bata. Parang mas Oh, okay. Okay. And I have more lipstick now. Or be like just a guy. Pero don't forget, pagdating ko sa Nika, may rules mo siya. Uh, para hindi siya magmukhang ano, madari or something. Dapat, hindihan niyo po na kapag light po yung eyes, pag light po yung eyes, pwede po kayo mag-dark ng lips. Now, kapag ano, kapag dark ka po, hindi it's dark ang eye. Vice versa po. Basta po, ganun po siya lagi. Oh, Here's the final look for. Here's the final look for. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look younger, dog. Doc JC, what can you say? Very fresh. Very beautiful. Mr. Keiske, how can we reach you? Baka may mga participants tayo na who wants to get in touch with you for makeup.
Mr. KK, how can we reach you? Just in case some of our participants want to get in touch with you for their makeup. Uh, you can reach me at uh, Facebook. I'm um, making Facebook, Facebook page for uh, Facebook page for is Facebook and Kishi Hair and Makeup. And so uh, Instagram number for is at K Hair and Makeup. For. Yeah, I am going to have your hands for your question. Just in case for them, I'm going to have your hands for them. Send it up for them. I'm going to send it up for them. So, so let's scan the QR code to get in touch with Mr. Casey. Thank you so much for that demo. You look beautiful, Dr. Santa Cruz. So before and after. So fresh, no? Ganda, ganda. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Keiske. Again, you can scan the QR code to get in touch with him. So on with our raffle. Uh, the batch of prices would be discount vouchers coming from VRT so that we can continue taking care of our health. These are 50 ancillary raffle prices. So all valid until December 31 this year. So please, I hope to see you in VRT to get the test done. So drawing out 20 pap smears, 20% discount for non-seniors and additional 5% for seniors. So these are all the winners. Congratulations. And that winners for um, discounted transvaginal ultrasound, 20% discount for non-seniors, additional 5% for seniors. Please flash the winners. So congratulations. Next would be 10 winners for mammogram. This would be discounted once again. Flash the winners, please. Congrats. And lastly, not definitely not the least, no bone densitometry. Twenty percent for non-seniors and five percent for seniors. Please flash the screen as the winners. Okay, congratulations for those who won. The organizers will get in touch with you. Please do avail this uh, discount. This is one step to keeping yourself healthy. So may, not, may I now call on our dear uh, department chair, Dr. Marinela Abba, to give the closing remarks. Dr. Abba, take it away. Good morning, and thank you for attending our webinar on Aging Gracefully Inside and Out. As Sophia Loren puts it, there is a fountain of youth. It is your mind, your talents, the creativity you bring to your life and the lives of the people you love. So when you learn to tap this source, you will truly have defeated age. So I hope this webinar has taught us that age is just a number and that we should age beautifully and gracefully inside and out. So with that, I would like to thank our speakers today for sharing with us their time and expertise. Thank you to my sis, Dr. Annabel Alenzuela, for your lecture on exploring the genital urinary symptoms of menopause. Thank you, Dr. Mary Amy Fatima Chua, for your talk on caring for your skin in the menopause. And to Kisuke Kishi for teaching us how to look good despite our age. Of course, I would like to thank Dr. Chuchi Lasaga and JC Almaria for, for leading the team. And thank you, Dr. Sudi Abelardo, for organizing this webinar. Maraming maraming salamat to Sir Irish and his Biofam team for supporting this endeavor. Thank you to the VRP marketing team headed by Mom Rose also. And of course, thank you, our dear participants. I hope you all enjoyed today's topics and looking forward to next year's menopause activity. So have a nice day. Thank you, Dr. Abad. Stay gorgeous. And thanks to Biofam, VRP, and all of our participants in joining this play forum. Let us all stay healthy and beautiful inside and out. 
Once again, this is Doc JP signing off. See you again next year as we celebrate the Menopause Month. Keep safe, everyone.